Today we're going to continue this project, which was for ER20 collets to hold the end of them while you tighten them up, and also for ER32 collets on the big side there. And I have a wrench that will fit on these ER20s, no problem, but the ER32 is a much larger wrench and I just don't have that in millimeter size. I thought this would be a great project to practice my <laughs> Fusion and my Tormach skills on. So making a wrench that's ergonomic and all of those things, a lot more difficult than you might think. I cut out two blanks for this project with my circular saw like I showed in one of my older videos here. Cutting out two of them because I know there's a high likelihood that I'm gonna screw at least one of them up. I am a novice, novice Tormach operator. I am not a machinist novice Tormach operator, but our first step is gonna to be to square these up and get them to size and thickness. First off is to spot drill and then drill two holes that we're going to use when we flip the part to set Z0 off of. I've got it slowed way down because I couldn't get it to peck. Maybe it's doing it and I just can't see it. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Cool. Nonetheless, slowed it way down. There's our holes. This next is the adaptive. I've got it slowed way down just to make sure everything's cool. These make me really nervous. This is going to be the chamfer, the big chamfer on this part. It's still scared. And that's why. What in the hell? Uh, okay, well, no harm, no harm. I think we're all right. I don't think we trashed, we did trash the part. But <laughs> What do we do here, huh? Can't give up. All right, made a big gouge in her, but you know what? It's a lesson. It's a lesson. It's another lesson. All right, time for the fun news. This tool was apparently not in my library. I thought I had it in there with an offset and all that kind of stuff. So it was trying to drive it down to where the spindle, the top of the spindle there was, uh, you know, all the way down at the top of the vise. <laughs> That's not good. So yeah, we sustained a little bit of damage, but we're gonna continue through. I think this will still be a good tool, good to use. Hold your breath, I got my finger on the stop button. That's looking good. Oh yeah, baby. Looks like it got, if it didn't get dead on, it got pretty darn close to where zero zero is supposed to be. It doesn't look like the coolant's on. Hold your breath. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Woo. Kind of rattled a little bit, but it looks good. This one's gonna go through our little damaged area. Hopefully it'll take out most of the damage. Yeah, not too shabby. Now we go the long one. Yeah, buddy. Yikes. That's definitely hard on the tool. Fusion needs, ah, oh, that one moved something, I think. Yeah. 
We'll see how she comes out here. That's it for that tool. A little bit of material buildup there on the end. Yikes. Next up is our engraving. This should put the 32 and 22 millimeter markings on, as well as the logo for Guru Machine Works. I am slowing this way down because my level of comfort <laughs> here, as always, just not, and I guess that's the nature of prototyping too, right? We're always doing something new. So this is supposed to contour the whole part uh, and do a little bit of slotting, I guess is the way I would say it. So it's supposed to slot off the two ends. I've got it running it like 25% because it has to pierce through here and slot. So I don't, yeah, there we go. Not terrible here. Shouldn't be too hard for it to cut. But it is taking that full depth of cut and the hope is that we can get rid of any witness marks on this, but it doesn't look like yeah, it looks like we're off just a hair. That was probably from the re-zeroing. Yeah, I should have left the last contour kind of fat, but I didn't, and that's okay. I think, uh, well, I think if we wouldn't have had to re-zero, we'd probably be a lot closer. Nonetheless, it'll be all right. Now this might be my pass that saves me here. That's right. That first pass was, was fat. This is my cleanup pass. And it should clean these up. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Oh yeah, it's getting rid of that witness line for sure. Not too bad. One, one little mistake, big mistake. But, you know, we're learning. We're always learning. And... Uh, yeah, that all looks pretty awesome. The Definitely these chamfers, that beat that tool up. I need to figure out a way that it can not do that. Backside zeroed out, ready to go. The first operation is to do a pocket on the top. Again, <laughs> always a little nervous on these things. And I hit the stop button. <laughs> because <laughs> I got nervous. Here we go, cycle start. It'll lift back up. We'll try and be less nervous this time. Maybe I'll slow the feed down. We'll slow it down to 50%. There it goes. And we are coming through the top hat. This particular program, I changed. The first bit takes the real light cut uh, on the end of the tool. And then I'm taking three cuts to do the bigger chamfers. Yeah, so this should just be one whack at it. And it should all be done. It's looking good. Yeah, we're slightly off center maybe. Uh, 
You can tell where the coolant kept turning off. It's got a little burr on the edge down here where the coolant was on just looks wonderful. Wow, check that out. So yeah, that did a really great job once I figured out the coolant wasn't working. So we got it squared away now. That's looking good. The last thing is to engrave this sucker. What I did for this was create a second tool. It's exactly the same tool uh, for the engraving. I just show it as 10 thousandths longer so that it'll cut 10 thousandths shallower. So it's kind of a first cut and that allows the second deeper cut to just take off a nick and hopefully have a little bit cleaner edge. Although I'll tell you right now, doing this 10 thou shallower actually looks better, looks cleaner. So I may just leave it at that, we'll see. This is minus 10 thou, and that actually looks super clean. So I am gonna leave it at that, and I think that is our last operation. Just for funsies, I'm gonna show everybody what's under here. I don't know if this is the right way to do this or not, but it's the tools that I had, so it's the tools that I used. So this has got chamfers on the back side, and I'm just gonna be real easy when I pick this up. It's got chamfers on the back side, so I couldn't put um, I couldn't put parallels under the edges because there were chamfers chamfers there. So what I did, you can see the parallels are kind of like at an angle, like a pie shape, and I rested them here and here so that. I was picking up on a solid thing and you know, it was like the only thing I could come up with. Seems to have worked. So I don't know. <laughs> We've got the tool back in here, full disclosure. I just tried this tool on the two collets and the one thing I didn't measure was the thickness of the area I could get in with the wrench. And these, this is too thick. So the damage side is what I've got up right now. And I've just got my shear hog in here that dude, and we're just gonna clear off uh, some of the thickness here and see if we can make this work. Yeah, I mowed down this side, and actually the logo looks a little bit better now that it's a little bit shallower because I took off the top, but we just got down to the thickness that'll fit in there, so that works really well. You can see I had to cut this one down more than the shallower end, so both tools fit now. Again, <laughs> I'm super happy with this project, even though uh, you can see, you know, little failures on there for sure. But this works really well for what I need it to do. So tightening up the collets, if I got one and I need to open it up, that combination of tools, the one I made on our last episode and the wrench that I made this time, they work awesome. And I did fit this other end to make sure that it worked. So yeah, there we are. I hope you guys had just as much fun as I did learning what to do and what not to do on the Tormach. I will catch you on the next one.